to training camp live. Casey Phillips here. We are going to be showing you so many live look into practice, talking about all the major topics of your Buccaneers leading into the first preseason game this weekend. And, of course, taking your Facebook questions as well at the end. So leave those for us underneath our live video here on Facebook. And now I'm going to bring in my co-host, Scott Smith, senior writer and editor from home. Again, if you weren't with us to hear, he has been a close contact a while back. So he is quarantined just to be extra, extra safe. And thanks to technology, he can still be here with us. So first of all, Scott, let's take a look at this Ticketmaster play of the day. You know, since you weren't be able to be here, we gotta we gotta show you some of the plays from yesterday. And we got the pass, and we have oh look at that, Sean Murphy bunting with the pass breakup. I mean, taking on Chris Godwin, it's a good sign. I feel like all, so often in training camp, everybody just cheers for the the touchdowns and the offense, and it's good to give the defense some love as well. I saw the Tom Brady. Uh, I saw Tom Brady at the beginning of that clip and assumed it was just going to be another incredible Tom Brady to Mike Evans back of the end zone uh, right. fade pass. So that was, a, that was a nice twist there at the end. Nice little twist. That's Something what we're here for. Yes, that's what we're here for. All right. Well, uh, before we get into some of our other topics, there was a little bit of news. I know that one of the biggest things that we have been asked about so far is the health of some of our tight ends. And we found out about Cam Brate and a little bit of an update. Why don't you tell everybody? Yeah. Uh, the Buccaneers activated him or removed him from the active PUP list yesterday, which means he's now eligible to come back to practice. I don't know if he'll be practicing today. They probably will ease him in. I remember last week when the same thing happened with rookie cornerback Chris Wilcox. He didn't really put a helmet on until about two or three days later. So, but it's great news. It really is because, as I've explained before, the only reason to put a guy on active PUP is you have to do that right before camp starts in order to have the option of putting them on reserve PUP at the beginning of the regular season, and then they would miss six weeks. Uh, if you don't start them on active PUP, you can't do reserve PUP. You have to put them on injured reserve. And that means that there was at least some thought at the beginning of training camp that whatever Cam's injury is, and it really hasn't been discussed uh, you know, with any specifics, could linger long enough for that to be an option. So the fact that it didn't and that he's going to be returning to, to practice is, is really good news. Absolutely. And so I know that, again, we've, we've talked a lot about who's going to get what snap count for the regular season, looking at who's going to take, you know, there's so many weapons, so many people, but preseason has a whole different dynamic in terms of snap count because there's one less preseason game than we're used to. Yeah. And then after not having preseason at all last year, it's been a big question of who's going to see how much action and what that's going to look like. So why don't you tell some of your thoughts in terms of the offensive side of things, what we can expect snap count wise for this first preseason game this weekend? Well, we got our first clue yesterday when Bruce Arians was asked, like you said, there's only three games instead of four, and we all kind of are pretty familiar now with, with the uh, pattern of preseason player substitutions. Usually the first game, the starters only go one or two drives, and the second game they do a little bit more. Third game they usually get about a half, maybe a little bit into the third quarter, and in the fourth game only the, the young guys and the rookies and the back end of the depth chart play, and the starters don't play at all. So what do you lose? Which one do you remove when you go from four games to three? Do you start – which which in game one at the second spot but no coach bruce arian said it's going to be like a regular preseason week one so therefore even though we didn't have a preseason last year we can look back two years to bruce's first year as the head coach and see what the substitution patterns were like and we can see the snap counts here from that first preseason game in 2019 and you see the same pattern pretty much all along you see the starters there like Jameis and mike and chris and the running backs all getting about 10 or 12 snaps, which basically means two drives or maybe one really good drive that took up that many snaps. And so I think that's what we're going to see again. So if, you, uh, you know, if you're looking forward to seeing the Tom Brady in a preseason game, you're probably going to have to make sure you tune in at the beginning. Same thing with Mike and Chris. But that gives, uh, like right here, Ryan Griffin, who's had some really nice preseasons in his career. Um, and I don't mean that as a backhand compliment. That's the option. That's the opportunities he's had to play. And he's done pretty well with them. So if you look at those uh, snap counts again from the quarterbacks, you see not only the starter, but also Blaine Gabbard, who came in second, didn't play very long. So what does that mean for this game? Could could mean uh, a lot of Ryan Griffin, but it could also mean a lot of Kyle Trask because two years ago, the fourth quarterback on the roster, and he was only here for a short time, was the younger Vinny Testaverde, son of you know Buccaneer legend Vinny Testaverde, and there was not any real need for him to play because he wasn't really thought to have much of a shot, whereas Kyle Trask is going to be on the team. So you might see a lot of him. 
Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And, and the running backs in particular, it was interesting to see on that graphic how much action Dari Ogunbowale had gotten. And so what do you think the translation is for the running back yeah. room? We talked about the wide receivers and quarterbacks a bit. Mm -hmm. And I know the running backs have been one of the areas that everybody's been most excited to see one of the few sort of quote unquote battles going on this year with so many returning starters. Yeah, I think you'll see the same thing. And, and that year, Dari was essentially the number three back going into that preseason. So you see your third back getting the majority of the playing time. And uh, <clears throat> this year on the, you know, that on the depth chart, that could be Giovanni Bernardo, that could be Keyshawn Vaughn. And I think it would be more like to see Gio early in the game. This could be a big game for Keyshawn Vaughn. It seems to make a lot of sense if you already know what you, how you feel about uh, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. You plan to use both of them anyway, so I don't know how important it is to have them battle it out in the preseason. But Keyshawn Vaughn is a guy, this is an opportunity to see a lot more of him. All right, well, we are going to take a quick break, and don't forget to submit your questions to us via Facebook underneath our live video. Leave them in the comment section. We'll get to those in our final segment. Right now, let's take a look back at some of the highlights from yesterday's practice. JPP, he will, <laughs> JPP, he will not do nothing. He will not show up to the project. He gonna be there on the, the day you present it, act like he did something. So JPP, hundred for sure. Patrick O'Connor, Vita Vale, maybe Gronk too, cause he won't do anything. I hate to say it, he my dog, but Rojo, I, I, I don't think we get nothing done. Either Tony O'Brown or Duncan Sue. Definitely Will Driscoll. But we'll want to do a project with any offensive city because they always get the most help. Sean Murphy Bunny. This is the last person I'm going to do a group project with. Wow. You wouldn't do anything. Tell me you did anything. I got it. Welcome back into Training Camp Live. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And just a reminder, in our next segment, we will be taking your Facebook questions. So if you have those for us, leave them underneath the Facebook Live video in the comments section. Uh, for now, we want to get into the defense a little bit. We just spent that last segment talking about what we might be able to expect from the offensive side of things this first preseason game in terms of snap count. Everyone's been wanting to know with only three preseason games, what is that going to mean? Like you said earlier, we'd gotten used to sort of a certain formula around the league that happened when there were four games so how does losing one affect who we see when and how much so let's talk about this defense a little bit what are the things snap count wise you're really going to be paying attention to for this preseason game who are maybe some of the people that we're going to get to watch that fans have been excited to see yeah if anybody wasn't tuned in in our first segment just a recap uh, Bruce Arian said that this first game would still be like a first preseason game when there used to be four of them now there's only three of course <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, that means that you're probably not going to see the starters for more than one or two drives on both sides of the ball. And that's good news for a lot of these defensive linemen you see in Dominican Sue there um, because there's a lot of them. I mean, we have let's see, uh, 11 defensive linemen, and a lot of them are guys that have played in the regular season for this team before. So, um, you know, that's a lot of guys to try to get on the field. So it's probably a good thing for guys like Khalil Davis or Jeremiah Ledbetter that that the starters probably won't go very deep in this game. They should see a lot of action. 
Okay, and let's do the same thing that we did for that first segment. Let's take a look at what we have learned about defensive snap counts in the past with Bruce Arians. What stands out to you here? Well, again, you look at, at the time going into that um, preseason, Carl Nassib and Noah Spence were the starters on the depth chart. Shaquille Barrett had just arrived, and we didn't know he was going to about to break off a 19-and-a-half sack <laughs> season. Uh, so that's why you see kind of surprisingly – Noah Spence started the game, but went, went 28 snaps. And if you remember back then, I think it was sort of the last test to see if, if he was going to become something to keep him around. So that was a bit unusual. Anthony Nelson, who was a rookie at the time, was hurt. Uh, and so he didn't, he didn't get to play at all. And that's a good one to point out right there because that means Anthony Nelson has basically not had a preseason since it was canceled last year. So he could really use the, the snaps this year. And then you look at the quarterbacks and the safeties again. The top, the guys at the tops were at the top were the listed starters. They got about a dozen snaps. And then you see Sean Murphy Bunting was a rookie at the time, got a ton of snaps. And Ryan Smith is a guy that you know throughout his career really never stuck as a corner in the defense. Yet he played 53 snaps. Uh, probably a lot of fans don't remember the name Lucas Dennis, uh, Kentrell Bryce. Those were safeties that were in the mix at the time. They weren't the starters, and you were trying to figure out who were your four, third and fourth and fifth, possibly fifth safety. So. Those are the guys you're going to see a lot of. So what that means for us this year is, you know, maybe a lot of uh, Javon Hagen at safety, maybe a lot of Herb Miller at corner. And then those uh, those guys fighting for possibly the sixth spot at corner, guys like Antonio Hamilton and Nate Brooks and, and Chris Wilcox, if he plays, uh, you know, it's, it's a big game for those guys. And then how about outside linebacker? I feel like this is a position that everyone has been talking about in general in terms of wanting yeah. to see, you know, what Joe Tryon is, is going to look like. How much of a look do you think he'll get in this first preseason game? And what could we learn overall about what this outside linebacker rotation could look like from this preseason game? Well, you would like to think that Joe Tryon would get a lot of snaps, but uh, counterintuitively, it's possible that if he doesn't see a lot of action, that's actually a really good sign for him. Um, because the Bucks don't feel like they need to see him a ton. Now, they probably would like to see him, and it, it looks like he, uh, he got him there. Is that a special teams drill? Is mm -hmm. he playing on special teams right there? Okay, well, that's really interesting. Uh, if you can, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys to watch on special teams to see who's getting those kind of reps. And as you see from the, the other guys wearing the yellow uh, caps on their helmet, that means that's the scout team. So this is the starting, I guess, is that kickoff return? It's a little hard to tell in this this uh, monitor. But yes, that's what it, it looks, it like. looks yeah. like it. Yeah, it's on so the other. It's on the field Tryon furthest is, from me, but I think that's. It looks like that's what's happening. That might that might be the uh, the most interesting part of this for Joe Tryon on Saturday is how much is he playing? Think of Casey. Oh, there we go. Now we have you. We were froze for a little while there. Yeah, lot lost you for a second there. But what we finished okay. what you were saying about Joe Tryon? Well, that might be one of the most interesting parts of, of watching on Saturday is if he is playing a prominent role in special teams. That that would be a big boost for the Buccaneers if a guy like that can help you on special teams. Hello. There. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think we, we are freezing a little bit. So why don't we take a quick break here to see if we can get the uh, Internet to sort itself out there. And uh, we're actually it's perfect timing because Joe Tryon is going to be our guy that we meet the rookies with in this break. Like we planned it. Taking a year out of football, you know, it really made me value football a lot more. It was something that came you know, around every year. You know, I trained for every year, expected to play in every year. With COVID, you know, it made me realize that there's other things outside of football that, you know, are important, but definitely, you know, football is something that I really value and it's something that I miss a lot. I definitely got better in ways that, you know, I wasn't able to get better in, you know, if I was training for the regular season. Found ways to add value to my life, you know, doing a lot of yoga, doing a lot of, you know, mental work, things that, you know, just help me, you know, stay focused, you know, when I, when I knew. I wasn't going to be playing football. I definitely feel like it benefited me. You know, I've definitely made strides in my, my, my mental health. I'm just excited to get back to playing football, you know, doing, doing what I love. 
being at this facility, it, it means a lot to me, you know, seeing the, the dudes that I looked up to growing up. It, it adds a different level of, you know, urgency in my preparation to become an NFL player. And, you know, I'm, I'm still learning what it takes to become an NFL player. So, you know, it's like an ongoing process, but I believe it's going to be a great career for me here. A lot of opportunities to learn. I see a lot of opportunities to um, take their game and put it in my game. JPP, similar frame, really, really long career. Someone that I can just learn from, you know, just absorb all the knowledge he has. And same thing goes with uh, Shaq Barrett, someone that is also high in the, the sack categories. Definitely really respected in the league. Not the similar body types, but, you know, you can still take a lot of things from his game and put it into mind. So, you know, my dog Vita has definitely been a great uh, career for him here so far. You know, I, I've seen him grow. I came in as a freshman and he was getting, you know, the looks, you know, first round pick. You know, I, I definitely got to model myself after, not not a, at a positional standpoint, but, you know, just as a pro standpoint. Having dudes who have that type of accolades and the, those type of accomplishments behind them, their name, you know, it's really, really special. And uh, whatever my role is, you know, I know I'll be able to, you know, always improve and, you know, just being at practice with them every day, seeing how they, you know, hold themselves, something that you know, I'll definitely absorb from. Being a rookie, you know, you don't really know what's going on. You know, you're just trying to, you know, fit in any way you can. So, you know, I, I believe, you know, just making any impact I can on the, on the team is going to be something, you know, I look back on as successful. We're like, we need to get, we need to get Rojo like going, give him lanes, you know, because he's Rojo's a great, you know, he's good. He can, he, you know, he's fast, he's shifty. Buccaneers have the lead, 20 to 17, 7.53 to go in this third quarter. And after a great special teams play, downing it at the two, that's where Tampa Bay will start. I know we were backed up in uh, TV. He said, he said CG emotion. So uh, I saw the, the backer, he kind of, you know, shifted out of his gap a little bit. And I said, Ro, cheat up and just hit this thing hard. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, the play is supposed to go right, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice little gap over there to the left. Technically, I went to the wrong guy on that play. I, I was supposed to go out to the guy on the, over, the, over the tight end, but I felt that safety rolling downhill fast into the B gap, so I, I just took him. I get the rock. Uh, I see Jensen, you know, climb up the secondary. And I, I kind of looked, and I see the safety coming down, and his eyes got about this big around. I'm like, oh, Rose made that backside cut. He's only had to make one guy miss. And uh, we're going to block it clean on the backside. And as soon as the linebacker moved over, I think Rojo knew what hole he was hitting. And it was just make that one safety miss and outrun everybody to the house. I remember sprinting down there. I'd never been a part of anything that long before. Like, and I start sprinting, you know, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I've never been part of a run like this. Wow. Fighting adversity, you know, I made some mistakes early on in the game. Coach put me back out there, you know, just trusting the system. I talk to Roe all the time. I'm like, you know, run like you were a bad MF. Like, that's, that's what you are. You have to have that attitude every play. We are back here on training camp live, Casey Phillips, and we're having some technical difficulties with getting Scott back on from home. I know that there were some, some Wi-Fi issues, so we're still just going to show you guys some live look-ins to practice. There you can see they're still working on some special teams drills. Uh, thanks again to our amazing football video crew, Brett and his team, for giving us that overhead camera. Look how beautiful that is. We get the whole site of practice all in one shot, so we are just so appreciative to them. And uh, there you see O.J. Howard, and I was thinking today we earlier got a chance to see Casey Cam Brait in his pads. This is our first time getting to see Cam and OJ back there on the field together in a very, very long time. So I know that's got to make everybody very excited. Yep, there's Cam. He's got the helmet on and everything. So great to see that they were able to put him into practice so quickly. After. And look at that. He's even taking snaps. I mean, this guy comes off the PUP and decides, you know what, let's let's try being a quarterback. We, You know, <laughs> look how excited he is about how that went. I don't know what that drill is, but I think Cam's just so excited to be back on the field that he's like, put me in at all the things, coach. 
put me in in any position. Uh, all right, well, unfortunately, because we are having some difficulties with getting Scott back in, we're not going to be able to get to some of those Facebook questions that I know you guys have. So thankfully, we will be back here tomorrow, and we are going to try to get to as many of those as possible. So if you submitted a question today, come on back tomorrow. We'll get those put in, and hopefully we will get Scott's Wi-Fi situation <laughs> figured out a little bit better. But thanks, as always, for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow.